I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. The current economic recession has certainly caused misfortune, sorrow, and hard times for many Roseville area residents. That's nothing compared to the bullets of the Great Depression of the 30s when I was growing up. Those are the days when one third of the nation was ill-fed, ill-housed, and ill-clad and out of work. Southern Pacific Railroad and Pacific Fruit Express, Roseville's two largest employees, laid off 200 workers and reduced the salaries of an additional 1,200 employees. My dad, Charles W. Davis, avoided the layoff but had his wages reduced from 47 and one half cents to 37 and one half cents per hour. Railroad reductions such as these would affect the entire population of Roseville's 6,245, whose economy then was based almost entirely on the railroad. Particularly hard hit were the children as moms and dads had all they could do just feeding, clothing, and sheltering their loved ones. As a result, most entertainment centered around the home, reading, playing, monopoly, or cards, working jigsaw puzzles, listening to favorite radio programs like Lum and Abner, Fibber McGee and Molly, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, and Bing Crosby, my favorite, as well as other adventures and mystery shows. Neighborhood streets and creek lands also served as unofficial playgrounds. Money for movies and other paid entertainments had to be earned by the town small fry who turned to such money-making devices as selling used magazines for one cent each, mowing lawns for 25 cents, recycling soda pop bottles from one to three cents, each as well as other sort of chores. Earnings were meager, but prices were low. For example, 10 cents would get you admission to the Gibson swimming pool, now the Johnson pool, where one could spend the entire afternoon. Some spent all day there. The same dime could also buy a big hamburger or a giant milkshake. It was almost every child's goal, certainly mine, to earn 10 cents during the weekers, so he or she could attend the kiddies matinee at the Russell Theater. And for 30 cents, you could live like a king or a queen. Five cents would get you a bag of assorted penny candy, five of this, three of that, at Zeller's Confectionery on Vernon Street. Ten cents would buy a ticket to the show and hold on to the ticket because that would bring you a prize maybe later. Another five cents in the lobby would produce a big bag of popcorn with real butter. Now fortified with candy and popcorn in hand, I would and the rest of the kids would charge into the auditorium where no adults dare venture in those early days. Always to see the main event, always a sheet em up western preceded by one or two cartoons, a serial, uh, Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers in the 21st century, my favorite, The Clutching Hand. A featurette which always had some kind of a, a race where you could, if you had the number of the winner on the race on your ticket, you could win a prize. I remember once winning a big model airplane. And always previews of next week's attraction. Following the show, those of us who had any money left could return to Zeller's for a tall milkshake before heading home and getting ready for supper. For some reason, most of us were not hungry. Learning the value of a dollar and how to get the most bang for your buck was a never forgotten lesson. Home economics, I called it, for depression aid youngsters who, as today's senior citizens, have avoided for the most part overextension of credit and misuse of credit cards. 